In this video we're going to look at the big O and little o notation. We're going to look at its definition, go through some simple examples, and then we're going to go through a couple examples with the moment generating function and then cumulants, which is the log of the moment generating function. So here before we start we're going to let x be a, a positive function and that's positive for large x and I'll get back to that in a second. Some don't some uh, definition you don't have to say that. Um, we're going to let x converge to some value a but a can be a real number or negative or positive infinity and m has to be a positive number. Okay. So here here's our two definitions of big O and little o. Um, and the two things that are different is this symbol and infinity or zero. Okay, So let me give a heuristic argument of what I think both of these are. Big O means that these two functions f of x and g of x behave similarly as x approaches its the value, the limit, either infinity or to some value a. They, that these behave similarly and little o means uh, that, that f of x gets dominated by g of x, that this grows so big compared to this that it goes, the ratio goes to zero. And this, because they behave similarly, the ratio, the, you know, divide them, they, it goes to some value that's not infinity. Okay? And so now let's look at the definitions a little more. So here this symbol means there exists an, a positive m and some value x0. And x0 is, is means like x has to get much bigger than that or, um, or x has to be in a neighborhood of size less than x0 and, or x0 and neighborhood's a math term. Um, the, the absolute value of f of x has to be less than or equal to some m times g of x. Okay, and remember how I said g of x, some people say that it doesn't have to be positive. But if you say that g of x can be anything, then you have to put absolute values around this g of x, making it a strictly positive function. And, but then the absolute value of g of x is a positive function, so I just say, I just say that that's a positive function to begin with. Okay, and it, this ratio, the absolute value, um, has to converge, so converge absolutely. And then this ratio, so th that, this says for every m, that there exists an m, this for every m, there exists an x0 such that this relationship holds. So what that says is m can be anything, no matter how small, you know, really, really small, close to zero, but you let x get big enough we're close enough to the value a, then this really gets big compared to this, and it makes this ratio go to zero. Okay, so let's let's look at some simple examples first, and then we'll jump into something a little more complicated. So 3m plus 4 is little o of n squared. It says that th this dominates that as n goes to infinity, and you look at it by this ratio. Um, if you, n goes to infinity, then it's easy to show that goes to zero. Um, note that little n, or 3n plus 4 is not little o of n, um, because if you were to do this again, instead of n squared, we use n, then this goes to a constant. So n doesn't dominate that. But note that since it goes to a constant, that's, that's saying that it's big O of n. It says that 3m plus 4 and n are, you know, behave similarly as n gets big enough. And one way to prove that is that you let your function, um, <clears throat> absolute value of 3m plus 4, is less than or equal to the absolute value of each term. But that's always positive. And then once n gets big enough, you know, it's positive, it's going to infinity. This is positive, so you can take the um, absolute value away. And then if you multiply 4 times n, which is a large positive number, it even gets 
you know, this is even bigger, but this is 7n. Well, that's what we we're trying to show that this the absolute value of this function is always less than or equal to some value m times n. That's the definition of big O of n. Right there. So <clears throat> here um, we have a polynomial and then I'm claiming that f of x is big O of x4. And what that says is that this polynomial behaves similarly as just x4 when x gets big enough. And we all sort of know that in any polynomial the largest uh, term you know sort of dominates the rest of it. So I mean that seems intuitive and you can show that by the absolute value of this is less than or equal to the absolute value of each term. Um, then but once x goes you know big enough x is positive so this is positive you can take it away and then if we multiply this by another x which is a big positive and then multiply this times 4x this term is even bigger than that well this is 13x to the fourth and that's what we wanted to show that this is always it's bounded by this and for some value m which is 13 okay here's an interesting one this that uh, 22 times 1 minus 33 over n is big O of 1 and that says that the, the constant 1 in this term behaves similarly as n gets really big. And so here, remember, remember there in the th definition it says there exists an x0 such that when x gets bigger, and so the 33 here kind of like x0, so as n gets bigger than 33, then this piece in here is less than 1. And then so if we replace this less than 1 by 1, then this term is smaller than this term. Well, then we just fulfilled the definition of big O, that our function is less than some value, you know, m, which is 22, times our function, which is 1. So this is a true statement. Okay. So here, um, now we're going to kind of switch instead of thinking x goes to infinity. And it has to be, you have to understand what x is going to, whether it's infinity or uh, or to zero. A lot of people leave this off, but if it's unclear, you have to have it. So here, x squared is little o of x as x goes to zero. And you can show that by this ratio. You take x squared on top and then little o of x, x goes here. So it cancels leaving x and x goes to zero, goes to zero. And that says that x dominates x squared. And that makes sense because when your values are less than one, taking it to a power even makes it smaller. So this gets smaller faster than this. And then of course, that's what this is saying. Now, a series of interesting examples here. Um, where's this example five? Example six, we start looking at moment generating functions. So x minus sine of x is little o of x as x goes to zero. And then we can show that by this ratio. Well, x over x go, is, goes to one and then minus sine of x over x is the sort of that famous limit which goes to one, which is zero. So this is, that, and that's saying that x dominates this, that this gets really small faster than just x. Um, and now this one is not is is not as obvious. So this same function is little o of x squared. So remember that 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 here x dominated x squared. So this is even smaller than this, but this still dominates this. It gets that this gets smaller much faster than this, and you can show that by this ratio. So this ends up being a zero over zero. So you take Lobotol's rule, the derivative of each, and that's zero over zero, and Lobotol's again. And then I, I forgot my limit as x goes to zero right here, of sine of x over two, and that goes to zero. So this goes is much faster to zero than this. Um, now, the, the x minus the sine of x is not little o of x cubed.
because if you look at this ratio it goes to a value and you can do that with Lobotol's rule again it goes to a constant one sixth so it's not little o and that says that um, and my mindset is well that this ratio goes to some constant so it says these two behave similarly well that says that x minus sine of x is big O of x3 and you can do that by looking at the absolute value and um, well, and if you approach it from the right or approach it from the left it ends up being if you, you the this is always positive this ratio and then we just showed that that limit goes to 6 so it, that these two functions do behave similarly as x goes to 0 so here's the moment generating function um, before we start, you know, you can uh, use a Taylor expansion for e to the x. And here's the moment generating function, which is the expected value of e to the tx. So instead of just x, there's a tx in each of those. And the expected value is linear operator, so you can take it in. So this is our moment generating function. And so this is, can be rewritten like this. It's, the first term is 1 and then it's plus big O of t so what I'm saying is from the t not the zero but from one to infinity that behaves similarly as just the value t and then you can show that by looking at this absolute value of this uh, ratio um, now if you if you take the absolute value of all this it's less than or equal to the absolute the sum of the absolute value of each term and but the one of this t cancels with one of those t and you get this and then I forgot the um, the sum goes in here but I didn't want to rewrite the rest of the paper so you get this well then if you write this out you get this you get the first term is zero uh, n equals 0 so this it goes away and you just get expect the value of x and the next one it's this times t plus you know this times t squared and since we're we're saying that the moment generating function exists and that says that each of these moments are finite now some might say well the moment generating function doesn't always exist and so oops, so expanding this you get this and there's a t in all the terms but this first one and um, and we and we're saying the moment generating function exists which means these are all finite but you have a constant times uh, t or t squared but t goes to zero so all these terms go to zero leaving the expected value of x which is a constant which is less than zero so this is true the all the terms lat you know beyond this behave similar to t. So now let's look at, at the cumulates. Oh, and if the moment generator function doesn't exist, you know, you can use the characteristic function, which always exists. So for cumulates, before we start, if we look at the Taylor expansion of the, the log of 1 plus x, you get this. Okay. Now I'll leave that as a homework to you. So the cumulates is defined as the logs of moment generating function. Okay. Well, the moment generating function we we said was one plus big O of t. So, so it's the log of one plus big O of t. And this looks similar to this. So we can expand this using this. And that's what we do. So x, which is this, goes to here, minus big O of t squared over two plus you know, big O of t uh, cubed over 3 minus da -da 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 -da. then this, the big O of t is actually, you know, the the moment generating function. So if you put that in here, and then for the squared piece, you put it in, and then for the cubed and the fourth and etc. Now we want to start joining like terms, find all the terms that have just a t. Um, well, all these t's will have at least a squared, so there's only one that has a t, which is this one. Well, here's a t squared, so we, you know that we're going to use that term. And there's only one term here that has a t squared, which is this first one. When you cube everything, nothing will have a squared. 
So when you can combine those into this, and then you can keep doing that for T cubed, T fourth, T etc. Well, the um, if you take the derivative of the cumulant function, set T equal to zero, you get the first the mean. Then if you take the second derivative, set T equal to zero, you get um, the second central mean. And if you take the third derivative, you get the third central mean. And then I think it breaks down after that. I don't think you get the fourth central mean, um, but I'd have to look that up. So that's, that's cumulates. And here, the, the last example, um, and this is used in proving the central limit theorem. And so we'll go through that. In one of these videos, I'll prove that um, using this. Actually, you can use cumulates too, which may be a fun proof to prove the central limit theorem. Um, so here, here's the moment generating function. And then I, I'm claiming that every term passed here is little o of t. And that says that, that t squared dominates the rest of these as t goes to zero. And then it does it so fast that you can, you know, potentially ignore everything over here and only look at this when you're looking at the uh, central limit theorem. But to do that, you take the terms that are, would have been in the moment generating function, which are here, put it over t squared, um, and then take the t into every term, and some of them cancel, but you're always left with the, at least one t, and but then it's then as t goes to zero, these all terms go to zero, so it, it goes to zero. So these all these terms are little o of t. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Um, hope you liked it. Uh, like the video. Uh, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. All right, bye.